Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to this Hack the Box walkthrough video. Today we're going to be tackling the box crocodile. Um, as you can see, I already connected to the VPN and got my uh, target spun up. So if you need a second to, uh, to get caught up here, I'll give you one second to go ahead and pause the video and join me back here in one second. Alright, so jumping back in this, uh, we're going to start out with task one. It says, what end map scanning switch employs the use of default scripts during a scan. Um, we should be pros at this by now. That is dash, lowercase s, capital C, that'll run scripts against the machine uh, to try to get some more information on the services that are running on um, ports that happen to be open. Then it says, what service version is found to be running on port 21? So we've already done some work with port 21 and we know that that is typically gonna be FTP. Um, however, let's go into our machine and uh, see this for ourselves. So I am. Get, we're going to run our nmap script here, or nmap scan, uh, but we're going to run it with the scripts flag with uh, dash lowercase s capital C, uh, dash lowercase s capital V for version enumeration, then we're going to do dash V for a little bit more verbose output, um, then we're going to grab our IP address from here that we're attacking, come back over, um, let's paste that in, um, and this time we're going to save our output. So to save our output, we're going to do lowercase o, capital A, and then I am going to, I made an mmap directory, so uh, dot slash means this current directory that you're in. I'm going to save it to the nmap, and then I'm just going to name these crocodile. So uh, dash lowercase a, or dash lowercase o, uh, capital A saves it in several different outputs, so you can, or several different formats of the output, so you can uh, do some different stuff with the outputs once you have it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and uh, I will jump back with you guys once this nmap scan is done uh, done running here. Okay, so the um, the scan finished running there, um, and what I'll show you guys, I just went into my nmap directory, um, and we will list out what it showed here. So. Um, we have three different outputs now. Um, what we can do to see the output, um, and this way we just have it um, whenever we want it, just cat out the nmap uh, file. We can see what's going on here. So it looks like there is a port 7 that's open, um, but it's filtered, or it's filtered. Um, port 7 is filtered. Port 21 is open, and that is going to be FTP like we said, um, and the version is going to be VSFTPD. Uh, 3.03. So that's what we were looking for right now. So let's just go ahead and grab that um, and go back to answer this question before we get too ahead of ourselves. Um, let's answer that for task two. We'll come down to task three. It says, what FTP code is returned uh, to us for the anonymous FTP login allowed message? So let's go back over to our virtual machine and see what that is. So this is going to be the output underneath here from the scripts that ran on that service. Um, and it looks like this first line is going to say FTP anon, which is anonymous. So anonymous FTP login allowed. Um, and that is FTP code 230. So let's go back and enter that. So this is code 230, which means we can log into this machine um, with the anonymous username, which we did last time for the FTP service. So um, very similar box so far. Task four is going to say, what command can we use to download the files we find on the FTP server? Um, again, you should know this by now if you watched the previous videos. This is going to be git. Uh, you saw that with SMB, um, and you're going to see that with that FTP as well. So then it's going to say, what is one of the higher privilege sounding usernames in the list we retrieve? So we haven't retrieved a list yet, so let's go find out where we can grab a list from this machine. Um, my first guess is that it's going to be through this FTP anonymous, although we also do see that there is port 80 open, um, which is going to be a web server, so maybe we have something there. Um, and then there's all these other filtered ports, but um, it looks like these are the two that are open and that we're going to focus on. So let's go ahead, uh, clear this, and make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on, and let's FTP into that machine. Whoops, I forgot I had that copied. Let's grab the IP address of our target really quick. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll FTP into this machine. So we're going to use this anonymous login. 
So we'll do anonymous and we're in. So let's see if we can list things here. So it looks like we can uh, read the allowed users list and then allowed user list password. So let's go ahead and grab both of these. User list. Okay, so we got that one and then let's grab the other one. It's just gonna be get allowed user list dot password. Password. Okay. So I don't think there's anything else for us to check out on this anonymous FTP login um, for right now. Um, we could see if this, um, uh, let's see, um, let's, let's move these really quick. So we're just gonna move allowed dot star to the previous directory. Okay, and then let's CD back into our crocodile directory. Okay. So we will cat out the allowed users. So it looks like there is an Aaron, a Pwn Meow, Egotistical SW, and then an admin account. Um, and let's see what the passwords are. Oops. And then we will check out what the passwords are. Whoops, that was, flub that. Okay, so then it looks like we have root, super secret password one, and then a couple gibberish passwords here. So um, I don't know if these match up one to one, if Aaron's password's root, Pwn Meow is a super secret one, and then so on and so forth or not. Um, what we do know is that we have a user and password list though, that's cool. So maybe let's go back and see if any of the tasks are gonna hint us, because that would save us some time here. Um, but it says, what was the higher privilege sounding usernames? Um, I believe that was admin if I recall correctly um, from the list. Yes, and it was. Um, and then it's just gonna ask what version of the Apache HTTP server was running on the host. Um, so let's go, ba go back over here. Um, we'll CD back into nmap. Whoops, nmap. And then we'll cat out um, crocodile.nmap. And we will check out what that was. So that is gonna be Apache 2.4. 4.41. Um, if we copy that, uh, come back over and paste it, that should be good to go. Um, task seven says, what is the name of the handy website analysis plugin that we can install in our browser? So that is gonna be Wappalizer. Um, I won't show that for this um, box because it's just, uh, I don't have it installed right now. Um, it is very handy. It'll tell you some underlying technologies. There is a, a manual way of doing that and I'll show you that right now. Um, so if we grab this IP, just make sure this is what I have copied um, and we pull up a web browser. Um, let's check out what's running on the website here. Um, you should be able to with Wappalizer just to go um, straight over to this website. Um, it would show up as a plugin. You could click right on it and it would tell you programming languages like um, if it, there was PHP on the back end or JavaScript on the back end, um, what databases on it, what type of databases on the back end potentially, um, so on and so forth. There is a manual way of doing that. Um, you can hit Control U uh, and look at the actual uh, source code here. Um, and then the way that you would do this is you kind of uh, you kind of just scan and see um, if there's any links to certain pages that might be like .php, .js. Um, you're just kind of looking around, seeing there's some pictures on here. Um, there's not a whole lot that we can find. Um, I see some .svgs. Those are just also going to be pictures uh, as well. Um, we can keep scanning here. We can also do control F and then do PHP. Oh, okay, so it looks like there is some PHP pages, which is interesting. Okay, so we know that there's some PHP on the back end here. Uh, maybe we could just do .js too. Um, okay, so it looks like there is some JavaScript too, um, which is good to know. So these are good to know. Good to know the technologies that are on the back end here. Um, I don't see a whole lot. We can click through some of these um, links, but I don't see a whole lot of links. Otherwise, 
Um, it looks like the download doesn't work and the get started doesn't work. It's just going to take us, it's just pounded out right now. Um, so I don't see a whole lot of links. Maybe we can run a, a GoBuster scan on that to see if there's any hidden links or uh, directories that we can find. Um, let's try that now. We know So um, I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to use GoBuster. Um, we need to use the dir switch, um, which is going to signal to GoBuster that we're looking for directories and not subdomains. Uh, then we want to use dash u to signify the URL that we're going to be searching. Um, we're going to use a tell it to go over HTTP to our target IP address and then dash w for the word list that we want to use to um, iterate over and try to find the directories that are in those word lists. So um, what you can do is you can use user share uh, derb word lists. And then you can kind of select which ones you want. I'm just going to do common. Um, and then we also want to use dash x. So dash x uh, is going to signify the extension that we use to um, add on to the words within the word list. So we knew that there was JavaScript um, on the back end. We also know that there's PHP. So what you can do is you can do PHP comma JS. And we'll see if we can find any uh, interesting PHP or JavaScript files. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this. This is, might take a few minutes, uh, and then we can jump back together and go through the results once this is finished. All right, so I'm going to jump back in with you guys actually while this is running because it already found some interesting stuff, and we can check this, in, check this out uh, while it's still going. So what we're looking for specifically is status code 200s because that's the HTTP, HTTP OK request uh, or response. And that means that it exists, and we want to look at it and see what's there. So it looks like there's a config.php file. Um, there is also a, the index.html, um, and it actually finished while we were going over, which is just the landing page. And then it looks like there's a login.php. So, um, and then logout.php is actually going to be redirecting to login.php. So, um, what we want to check out is really this login and uh, config.php. Those are the two, uh, two that could be of interest to us. So we'll just go ahead and we will copy this so we have it. When we open up our web browser, we're going to paste this in and then do login.php. Interesting. OK, so we have a login portal here. Um, and we also have a list of usernames and passwords now. Um, so this could potentially be uh, somewhere that we could get in and potentially get admin access or user access to like a content management system or uh, some sort of uh, admin panel on the back end. Um, so this is good to know. Let's check out if anything's on config.php. Maybe there's a username or password um, specifically for that. Um, and we'll control U. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't look like there's anything on config.php. Um, so now what we can do, I my next step would be to go to login.php, um, and let's try some of those user password combinations. So I'm going to pull up um, our terminal, and I'm going to clear this, and we will go back to the directory here, and we'll cat out the allowed user list and the allowed user list passwords. So let's try some of these. Let's start out with Aaron. Whoops. And let's try, actually, you know what? Let's start out with root. Um, I feel, or admin. I feel like admin, it pointed us at saying, what's well, a high level account on this list. Let's try admin and see if they match up one to one. Um, so we'll come back here and try admin root. And sign in. All right, not going to be that. So they don't match up one to one. Maybe it's this super secret password. Let's copy that. Do admin. And then 
the super secret password. Um, that doesn't look like it either. Okay, so maybe these aren't it. Let's just try the rest of these out um, just to be 100% sure. Let's try this third one. All right, and I guess maybe it's not. Let's try this last one. Um, you could automate this process theoretically um, and do like a brute force attack if you wanted. Again, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it looks like that does work. Um, they don't line up one to one, but uh, that was. And there is the flag right there. Cool. So let's go ahead and grab our flag. Um, and we will come back over to hack the box. Um, and then this says, what switch can we use with GoBuster to specify we're looking for specific file types? Oh, okay, so we did that. That's going to be dash X um, for file extension. What file have we found that can provide us a foothold on the target? So a foothold's kind of like an initial um, entry point on the target. And this should be login.php is the file that we found. So let's submit that. Um, and then we also have the flag. So let's do hack the box, open curly brace, enter the flag, close it out, and pwn the machine. All right. So um, join back tomorrow. Uh, we will be going through the box ignition. Um, it's going to be another Linux machine. Uh, and I will see you guys there. Bye.